So let's revisit the scenario where everyone is trying to exit country B's currency and convert it back into country A. We saw in the last video that if just left to its own devices, if this were to happen, if a lot of B's were wanted to be converted into currency A, and because everyone is converting, everyone is afraid to convert into B now because they think for whatever reason that B, the country B is in bad shape, then you have this imbalance. And if you left to its own devices, the country B's currency would become devalued. You would need more, more B's to trade for an A, for an A, which is just another way to say B's currency, B's value. B's value would go down. And that could be a bad thing, especially if it's a pretty steep decline. Maybe it's a country that needs to import fuel from the rest of the world. Maybe they need to import food from the rest of the world. And if their currency were to devalue dramatically, then imports could become very, very, very expensive. And so people in that country might have to pay double for gas and double for uh, basic necessities like food and whatever else. And so we played out a scenario where the central bank of country B actively tries to intervene to keep this from happening, to keep the exchange rate stable. And so what they do is they could use they could use reserves, and I'll do this in blue for country B. So they could use reserves for, of A that they've accumulated during better times. And they take those reserves, so these are reserves that they accumulated in better times or in previous videos, depending on how you want to view them. And they try to balance out the supply with A's with the supply of B's by selling by selling their reserves and buying Bs. So one way you think of it, they're adding supply of As, and they're also adding supply, they're also adding demand for Bs. They're going to sell the reserves of A and buy their own currency. And that would work as long as they have reserves. They're going to be able to stabilize things so that this situation doesn't happen. But the problem was, and we talked about it at the end of the last video, is that they can run out here. It's not like they can. It's not like they can print a, a, another country's currencies forever, or they can't print it at all. They, all. they had to accumulate this. This isn't their own currency. So they have a finite amount of this. They could eventually run out. And what is often the case is currency speculators see this, and they begin to smell blood. They see, OK, look, people are trying to exit this currency. It would devalue if it was left to its own devices. But the central bank of country B is trying to keep it, is trying to keep it from devaluing by depleting its finite reserves of currency A. And so what currency speculators will start to do is, well, I can go into country B. And I can borrow Bs. So I literally could go to a bank in country B and borrow, I could borrow some of the B currency. And then I could go into the exchange markets and try to convert it into A's. And try to convert it into A's. And just off of when looking at this superficially, what, what's that going to do? Well, this is going to make the situation even worse for the central bank. Because now you have people actively, they didn't even hold Bs before. They're going to be borrowing Bs and then converting them into As. So it's going to create an even larger supply of Bs and even more demand for the finite number of As that are willing to go this way. And why is the speculator doing this? Well, think about the two situations for them. If for whatever reason, let me write to draw the two scenarios. So scenario one is is that for whatever reason, the central bank of B is able to keep the currency stabilized. So currency, currency stays, stays stable. And the other scenario is is that the central bank runs out of reserves and they have to essentially just let the currencies float and B gets devalued. So central bank, central bank. Out of reserves, out of reserves, which would mean that the currencies would float, the currencies would float, and B would would devalue, devalue. Well, if this first scenario happens, and it's become it's going to become more and it's going to become less and less likely as more and more people pile on this strategy, and more and more people try to uh, uh, run out of B's or try to exit B's currency. But even if this situation were to happen, then the speculator says, "Okay, the currency ended up being stable. I'll just unwind this. I'll take my A's when I have to pay off my debt in B. I'll take my A's, convert them into B's, and pay off my debt." And so, depending on what the interest rates and all of that were, not a big loss, or maybe even a minimal loss. So minimal loss. Minimal loss. And only if there's kind of a differential with interest rates or things like that. Minimal to no loss. 
minimal to no loss. But what happens if the central bank runs out of reserves? And remember, just the fact that these speculators are doing the speculative attack, they're borrowing in country A and converting into A, they're, car they're borrowing in country B and converting to A, that's making the central bank run out of reserves even faster. It's going to deplete their reserves. Essentially, when they do this, it's the central bank of country B that's going to be giving them, is going to be allowing them to convert. They, they don't know who they're, who they're buying these Bs from with this A currency they have. And so if this happens, that the central bank runs out of reserves, it floats, and then B devalues, then those currency speculators make a pretty good buck. And just to see how that could work, imagine that they borrow 100 Bs. They borrow 100 Bs. So this is what they borrow. They borrow 100 Bs. And while the, the currency is, is, is being actively intervened with by the central bank, they're trying to keep it from devaluing, the, 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 the Exchange rate is 1A for 1B. So they convert it. They're able to convert to, so they convert on the open market. And the only reason why this is able to happen at this exchange rate is because B's central bank is actively selling A's. They're able to convert to 100 A's. 100 A's. Now let's say that they are able to do this, and the, the central bank runs out of A's, and then a devaluation occurs. So this is happening. This is happening at a conversion of 1A equals 1B. But let's say that these guys, they run out of reserves, so things devalue. B becomes worth a lot less. And then we go to a future state where 1A is now equal to two Bs. Well, as soon as this happens, remember, this is this scenario right over here that we're thinking about right over here. This is what the currency speculators want to happen. If 1A all of a sudden is it's 2Bs because the central bank can't intervene anymore, they are floating, the, car, the B gets devalued, then what's going to happen? These guys can take their 100As, convert it back once, the, once things are floating. So now they're going to convert back into this direction. And how many Bs can they convert it into? Well, now they can convert it into 200Bs. They can convert it into 200 Bs. They can pay off their debt, because they borrowed the 100 Bs. So minus 100 Bs to pay debt, to pay debt. And then they make a pretty size, sizable profit. They make a profit of 100 Bs. And so that's exactly what they're hoping for. And so you can imagine this is one of those trades that they're going to try to get more and more people to do. Because the more people that jump on the bandwagon and do this exact same strategy, the faster the, the central bank's reserves are going to deplete, and the more likely, the more likely that this situation, this situation right over here, plays out.